Well, hey, hey, guys, welcome to the studio. At risk of being redundant, well, hey, hey, guys, welcome to the other room in the studio where we record vocals, acoustic piano, acoustic guitar. And here on my laptop looks like Ableton with complete controls, switching screens, record, enable, switch tracks, everything from a little Android laptop, even though my studio is about 30 feet away. We're talking about something called Space Desk. I'll have a link below for it. And it's so weirdly simple and functional. And I've been going about this the wrong way for a long time. If you've tried this before, you might have seen one of these programs before. Here's MIDI Hub. Here's RTP MIDI. And these are designed to allow MIDI to get transferred over your Wi-Fi into your system where your DAW has to analyze it as an incoming MIDI source and then apply it to the parameters in your DAW, often using a control surface, what looks like a mixer on your computer on your Android device. Here we are in Ableton and I'm taking a look at what they asked me to do, which was set up Mackie control and set the input and the output but I couldn't really get it easily to match along with any of the directions I could find for either of those MIDI products. Here's how you get it. Go to Google, type in Space Desk. The first thing that comes up is Space Desk. Open that site. You're going to see a little splash intro screen. You can go right down to Downloads. And they'll give you a couple of choices depending on your system. Something that really threw me about this was, upon downloading it, I looked for it on my Windows machine here, and it was not easy to find it because it's not actually a program. It's a driver. It's not an app. It's not something that you open or have to manage or configure or even deal with. It just works. This is an Android tablet. It's an RCA 13 inch, I think. Nothing special. And it's running Idle Champions on it. The game that plays itself. All I had to do was make sure this was connected to my Wi-Fi, which it always is. And I went to my app store and I got the free download for Space Desk, which shows up right on my tablet here. Okay, so let's see how this works in the real world. I've got Ableton up on one screen. I do have a two screen system over here. Here's my tablet. Well, anywhere I can see some space on one screen or the other, it doesn't matter. Right click, go to display settings, and it'll show me the two monitors that I'm used to. Here's monitor one, here's monitor two. Fair enough. Here I am on my little 13 inch tablet. I will open Space Desk, but watch here. It'll show my ISP. I just tell it to connect. Eyes up here. Third screen. So my computer is sensing this is screen one, this is screen two, but there's an invisible third screen over here, and it is this. So let's try a little bit of magic. I will take Ableton here, and I'm just going to drag it, and I can really drag it from screen one to two, but if I go off the far left side, watch here. It is now on this screen. My mouse is still active. I can say, okay, maximize, and I'm good to go. Now, with that in mind, I can actually walk away at this point. There are no actual cables here, but from anywhere, I can say, well, let me record a drum clip or something. I'll just say, new clip, tell it record. And it's recording a clip. I'm not actually recording anything in. You're hearing a cool saxophone, which I'm supposed to be playing along with. And when I'm done, I just hit stop. You can see I've got the new clip here. Everything is gold. 
That means in this room, about 40 or 50 feet away from my desk, here's Ableton. The touchscreen completely functions on this. I do have microphones and headphone feeds that fire off into this room, but I need to be able to control Ableton when I'm recording. I've heard of a few questions and concerns about running it this way. Do my shortcut keys still work? Is control U still going to control quantize remotely? Yes, it will. Not only does the touchscreen function, but all your key commands should work as well. What about compatibility? They, on their website at Space Desk, say it works for Windows 7 through Windows 10. I'm testing it here in Windows 11 and have not had an issue with it. Does your Windows build support this? Probably. I have heard of some concerns with NVIDIA graphics cards from the GTX 1060 and potentially lower than that, I would assume, as not necessarily being able to run multiple screens as easily. This is a GTX 3060, I believe, in this system. And another interesting question, once I take Ableton and slide it over to the third screen where it does appear on my tablet, it's not a duplicate of the screen anymore, meaning I don't actually see it on my main PC. Not really a consideration for me because while that happens, I'm out of the room. And incidentally, as soon as I shut off the tablet, it will automatically take Ableton from this mysterious third screen and put it right back on my first screen for me. If you're thinking, oh, I accidentally left it on the third screen, shut off my tablet, now I don't see it, it automatically pops back. The biggest bonus with using Space Desk that I've found is it's not actually anything that you need to configure and set up. If you've been running any of these MIDI capture devices that will work with something like Android, and then trying to get your DAW to recognize it, and then route it and apply it to the parameters in your DAW while you're looking at a control surface that doesn't look anything like your DAW, that's the reason why this is so easy. It looks like your DAW, it behaves like your DAW, all the key commands still work, and there is no setup for it that I've found. Bottom line, guys, this is super simple. You don't even see it appear on your PC. It's just a driver. And as far as installing it on your Android device, it really could not be any simpler to use. And it just works. And what about my other software? Maybe just dragging a plugin over onto that screen or I make videos. How about OBS? Can I just drag OBS onto that screen and work my way around the studio with it? Yeah, everything I've tried just works. Is it a perfect solution? No. I can give it maybe 8 or 9 stars out of 10. And here's why. It's a smaller display, it is a touch screen, and sometimes I have to kind of find the exact point to touch something. It doesn't always work immediately. There is a tiny amount of latency involved. So I would not count on this to do immediate punch-in times or something like that. It seems to have uh, maybe 100 milliseconds up to 200 milliseconds of delay at time. But for the mere fact that I can take this device, bring it into the other room, got my headphones, got my mic in there, arm record, leave myself enough of a lead in, sing along. Remember, it's not really my DAW running on the Android device. It's just a screen. So any latency I would normally have with recording in my DAW will be identical. And in my case, that's sub 20 milliseconds. So I'm gold. Well, guys, I had a lot of fun putting this video together. Please, if you're interested in this type of discussion, come join us in our Facebook group, Recording Tips. And we got a lot of work to do. Let's get to it. Uh, hey, hey, guys. Uh, thank you for coming out. You know, I always have fun putting these together. I was joyous when I found this. Uh, Jarrett actually just asked a really good question in chat here. He said, can you mirror your main screen to it like a normal monitor? Uh, depending on how you mean that, this is not a mirror 
software. Uh, when, a lot of times when we think of a mirror software, we think, okay, Ableton's running on screen one, and my Android is showing an absolute duplicate of that uh, at the same exact time. And we've tried things like that in, in different devices uh, here in the studio in the past. It's not a bad way to do it, but this I would call this more of a, a control transfer or a screen transfer. You move it off of your PC screens onto the Android. Uh, Joe Breitenbach and I were having a discussion about that earlier, where I think for he I think wanted it duplicated uh, or mirrored. And that's not what the software does. Uh, as I was saying in the video, for me, I don't care. What it, what I do is I just transfer the screen over to the Android and I walk away with it and I can control OBS or control Ableton while I'm away in the tracking room or, or doing something else. And then very simply when I'm done, I just close the program and it all pops right back up onto my screen or I could manually drag it back on. I wouldn't need to see it on two devices at the same time ever. So I I am I am aware of like screen mirroring and that type of thing and I might be getting the the wording a little bit incorrect. I know uh, Joe Breitenbach knows a lot more about tech than I do and he might chime in on this or obviously in our Facebook group recording tips more technical questions really should be better handled by the more technical people that we have. Uh, we're blessed with some good experts in that group, for sure. Oh, Evan's here. Hey, Evan, good to see you. Uh, I'm glad you guys are all here. Uh, we are going to continue this discussion. Uh, if you have any other questions, let's let's just switch it over to the Facebook group. I thank you guys very much for coming out. Uh, Jarrett, uh, excellent question today. Uh, Oren, Joe, great seeing all you guys. Evan, glad you made it. All right, guys, we got a lot of work to do. Let's get to it.